the struggling coal magnate Nathan Tinkler selling the farm, Patnick Farm. What is the outlook for coal with the challenges of LNG and environmental interests continually rallying against that poor old commodity? For more, we're joined by Bruce Jakes, the director of IHS McCloskey. How are you, Bruce? Good day, Peter. Now, mate, we should explain IHS McCloskey. This is a, a newsletter service, isn't it? Yes, Website. newsletter, conferences, uh, a bit of consultancy. And all much. around coal. That's right, so lots of services. They can't dig a, a spade of shovel, but you know about it. Is that right? I wish that were true. <laughs> okay. So, but that's why I'm here talking coal with you. You, you do specialise in the stuff. Coal prices. Absolutely. What's well, look, the, the outlook's uh, probably better than it was, Peter, but only because we've been through a, a, a bit of a difficult uh, time. Mm. Uh, prices uh, have come very heavily off. A, of, we were having a great party. I think I've been here a couple yeah. of times. and we we're you know, enjoying th that party. Things were great. Yeah. Well, now it's the hangover and uh, prices... The, the issue with prices are when you take the dollar and costs into consideration, its prices are right on that uh, cusp of okay. making a lot of companies a bit unprofitable. Okay. So you can't do much about the dollar, but you can do something about the costs. And that's why a lot of business people are squealing to the government, like, help us here in terms of getting more out of our, our employees Productivity-wise, that, that, that's the argument, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's it's going on in the coal industry to a point. Um, I think it's more iron ore, I know, but yeah, the, yeah, look, look, like I think it has to be said, we got a little bit complacent. I mean, prices were sky high for a long time, yeah. and a lot of mines here are, are quite old mines. Uh, they're pretty deep, so before we knew it, uh, while we were enjoying the party, the costs kind of crept up on us, and of course, the dollar compounded everything. Mm. I guess you could say if the dollar's high, they can invest in capital equipment. But is the capital equipment thing, or is it a labour productivity thing? It's it's a bit of both. Um, and and it, look, it, look, it's a sort of a 20% game uh, is one way to, to look at it. If the dollar came down 10%, if prices went up 10%, most of the problems would go away. But then, you know, would we get complacent again? Okay. Perhaps. I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. Is it a time to buy coal? Because it's been beaten up a bit. But the LNG story, the solar, US shale gas, uh, shale oil, the greening, all this is coal on death row. Well, I don't think so, Peter. And it, it really, it, it's amazing how the medium long term position doesn't alter greatly. Mm -hmm. uh, Asia, Southeast Asia, China also is still using a lot of coal and is still on a growth path with uh, coal fired power. Um, steel consum consumption, of course, uses uh, coal. Mm -hmm. So there's still a good uh, head of steam in all of that. There will be some competition from other fuels. Clearly, shale gas is going to be one of them. Mm -hmm. So the price levels become an issue. OK. So, and also, you know, a, a lot of people in the media start saying, oh, China's going solar and they're becoming really clean. They might be doing that, but doesn't mean they're actually rejecting coal? Not at all. But coal, from where Australia sits, China is a swing factor mm -hmm. for coal. Mm -hmm. So when China uh, starts importing coal, uh, they switch it on and off uh, pretty readily. So if they're in a period where they're importing, the, the, the price is great uh, for Australia. It gets a, a bit of a fillip. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, they're not, uh, they've, got, they've got plenty of their own, China, yeah. and that's what they're doing at the moment. They're okay. not importing very much. Well, given that, it seems to me coal share prices must be relatively low compared to the party times. They are indeed. So if I'm a long-term investor, and I know, I know you're not a financial advisor, so you're not giving advice here, but you are someone who understands interest, are coal share pro shares good value at the moment for a long-term investor? I think arguably so, Peter. I think you've got to swallow hard uh, yeah. and, and you might have to be a little bit brave and wait a while. But a lot, of the, a lot of the top Australian coal stocks got picked off by the majors, and we talked about that. Yeah. The ones that are left, their share prices are down mm. by 50 60% in many cases. Mm. So uh, as long as you're willing to hang on, some of them aren't even in production yet. Yeah. Uh, it, they, they, it's that sort of investment. So you need to have it in a portfolio with some other things yeah. that are giving you some cash. It could be your exotic <laughs> investment. Exactly. Yeah. Now, China, everyone seems to say, is crucial. And you made the point. By the way, I went to Vietnam recently, and I'm starting to think of all the other ASEAN countries, like you know, Burma or Myanmar, as they're now called. They're, they're, they're all um, starting to embrace economic growth, aren't they? 
Are they going to be demand? Will they be demanding coal? I think they certainly will, and that's part of the story. But the really big story for Australia is is still Japan, Taiwan, Korea, and China, mm. uh, with a bit of augmentation from some of these other growth economies. Vietnam's interesting; they're about to switch from being an exporter of coal to an importer, or neutral, or, or an importer. So yeah. there's an opportunity there. Yeah, and and you make make the point. Um, Japan, you know, for the first time in a long time, they're trying to stimulate their economy. They used to be our most important export customer. This will improve their demand for that kind of resource uh, down the track. We can only hope, Peter. They've yeah. been very sluggish for a long time. They yeah. still are the biggest uh, destination for Australia and very important to us. Yeah. Still, uh, still they're the biggest so buyer of coal. They are, that's and, and, and we, we would love them to, to, to kick along in that yeah. economy. Yeah, I, I think they will. Trust me. I, I once had a conversation with the Deputy Governor of the Bank of Japan. This was about... Um, 17, 18 years ago, and he asked me if, if I thought J Japan would come out of its economic malaise. I said yes. I got that one <laughs> terribly wrong. But I was being a gracious um, um, guest. Let's go to some of the companies that are big in the news at the moment. Whitehaven Coal, Nathan's little investment. How's that going? Yes, Whitehaven, of course, has quite an overhang with uh, big shareholding from Nathan Tinkler, and the market doesn't like that. So I think for Whitehaven to really be an attractive investment, probably something has to be worked out Nathan. with uh, with the Nathan Tinkler investment. Is the company... Yeah. An OK company? Oh, very much so. They've got uh, a, a good diversity of different coal types and their cost structure is reasonably under control. They'd like it to be a bit lower and they'd like the dollar to be lower. But, yeah, it's a quality company, Whitehaven. Is it because people know he's desperate, they've, they've pushed the price down hoping that he'll just have to bail out and they'll get his stuff at a low price. It's just that classic overhang of a, of, of a, of a major shareholder on a share price. They yeah. know it's a selling proposition at some point yeah. uh, and so why should you pay more for Whitehaven at the Once moment? Once again, so for, for, for the, 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 the punter, that could be an interesting one if, if Nathan has to eventually get out of the stock. I think you need to wait, probably need to wait for a workout before yeah. you know really what's yeah. going to happen. OK, now. Yan Cole, Y-A-L. Yan Cole is another one that's a, they're a little bit similar to Whitehaven in the sense they've got the, the whole cross-section of coal types, from coking coal, steaming coal, PCI, ev everything is in there. Uh, again, they're, they're, a, they're a company with a, with a cost issue. Mm -hmm. uh, at current prices, uh, they're not particularly profitable. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm, look, I'm, I'm not ultra keen on, on Yan Cole. Let's honest. go to Cockatoo. Cockatoo, another development style company. They've got a bit of production, but the main reason you would buy Cockatoo is is to take a view on their expansion of new coal areas, mm. and that at these prices, that again is is an issue. It'll happen, but will it happen soon? Will it happen in a profitable way? Tough question. What do you think of their management? Cockatoo management. Cockatoo management's fine. Yeah, no problems. Yeah. Okay, new coal. NCR. Yeah, New, New Coal, uh, they've had some uh, sort of administrative uh, problems, you might call it, with the Doyles Creek uh, uh, asset. It sounds like so, it's a troubled industry. At the it, it certainly coal. is. Uh, but again, uh, it, it's, it's a well-managed company that uh, once, once we get through the, the, the difficulties, could, could be quite a good investment. One thing that's happening, they, they have an issue like this. There's, there's a, um, not so much mainstream investing going into these smaller Australian coal companies, but they're getting big brothers. Some of the major companies, Noble is one of them, Noble, the big commodities mm. trader, is taking positions 5, 10, 20 per cent in some of these companies. New Coal has uh, a big brother that's actually a, a private, a, a successful private coal company. Mm. So again, uh, none, none linked to Labor New South Wales politicians. <laughs> um, uh, let's not go there. Give us a leg up, for God's sake. Now, OK, so, but that's an interesting point. So a company like Noble, in a sense, is playing the long game. Yep. Positioning themselves in these sorts of companies. That's right. There's, there's about half a dozen companies, and I, I probably just couldn't reel them off, no, okay. that, that Noble has a little position in, and then there's one or two other investors. Chinese companies have come in. Uh, instead of paying uh, huge prices for the whole thing, they're just taking a, a little investment and seeing how it goes. Yeah. Okay, Blackwood, BWD. Blackwood is another uh, company that's affected by Nathan Tinkler, uh, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, they're is. actually in court uh, at the moment, I think, still. Uh, with Nathan over uh, an investment. Um, they're, they're a classic development company. Uh, they're not in production yet. Uh, 
you know, uh, uh, it's one of those swallow hard if you if you want to get in there. You certainly get them cheap. Mm. So what do you think would be the the big circuit breaker to change the outlook for coal? For me, not, not an expert on coal, but I would have thought if China came out with a, a nine percent growth figure, that would do it. But is that the only thing that's going to do it, Bruce? That or the dollar, I think, Peter. And I, but, but I think, look, uh, it's, it, coal has always been a long-haul industry. Mm. And I think for investors, you've really got to look at it that way. Mm. It's, it's hard to get rich quick, mm. uh, except in extraordinary times in the coal industry. Uh, and at the moment, you're going to have to settle for getting rich Now, getting we know rich you slow. got rich slowly in coal. Did you get out the right time? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, as, as a commentator, you know what it's like, Peter. You can't, you're not allowed to hold these well, shares, really. Good point, good point. <laughs> now, one, one other question. Normal people think coal's coal, but there's thermal coal and there's other coal. Tell us the <coughs> type of coal and the coal you think that's in the, in the best position. Yeah, well, look, I think Australia's always been better placed in coking coal. That's the coal that's used for steel making, yep. simply because uh, thermal coal, <coughs> excuse me, it's everywhere. Uh, and the Indonesians are very big competitors and so are some others. Yep. For coking coal, we have a large amount of the best uh, quality yeah. uh, coking and coal. MacArthur used to be like that. Was yes, it? Yeah. yeah, PCI, it's a bit of a strategic yeah. coal. But the top two levels of coking coal, Australia uh, controls the bulk of the world trade mm. in, those, in, in those levels. Mm. And uh, look, shortage is always going to pay off in commodities. Now, in, in a lot of the coal space, there's not shortage, but in levels of coking coal, there is potentially, there, uh, there is actual and potential shortage. I think that's what that, that's. So, so what are the companies that you, you instantly think about when we say coke and coal? Unfortunately, it's tied up by the majors. Yeah. So you're talking BHP, Peabody, Anglo, Rio, these types yeah. of companies who've yeah. got heaps of other commodities. Yeah. I loved it when MacArthur was there, particularly when they wrote him off and you said to me, but coke and coal is really important. They, they, then they everybody were, came along. <coughs> they were a clean Bless entry yeah. uh, into, a, into a nice little nook of coking coal. Yeah. Um, uh, Peabody took them over. Yeah. They paid a big price, though. So yeah. there's a little bit of a... There's still an adjustment process going on there. They're a female CEO, too, didn't they? That's right. Yeah. That's right, yeah. And, and uh, it's all... It's it's all uh, you know it's all sort of subsumed under under Peabody now, yeah. so there's not you know you can't really see what's going on, but it, but it's fundamentally a good asset. All right, mate. Thanks for joining the program. Cheers, Peter. It's always <coughs> great to get down and dirty with the coal man, Bruce Jakes. Fantastic, mate. Now the Gillard government's hate session on the so-called rich continues with the media being fed treasury information that screams out loud that the rich of Australia are ripping off the battlers. This is all a softening up process for the budget, where Treasurer Wayne Swan will continue his politics of division and envy to cover up for his pretty average budgeting, which will see him admit to a budget deficit of between $10 billion and $20 billion. This anti-rich propaganda campaign would make Nazi Joseph Goebbels proud as Labor tries to blame the rich for getting too many tax concessions for contributing to super. This will hopefully justify their assault on super to put their books on a more credible footing ahead of the election. Flying home from Melbourne on Monday, I stagger at the vitriol of the ages editorialist as he, she or they ripped into the two lucky rich, the top 5% who are apparently pocketing 37% of the tax concessions associated with super, which means 95% of Aussies are only getting 63% of the concessions. By the way, no journalist can work out these figures. So they are supplied by Treasury via a Labor spin doctor preparing the country for the bad news on budget night. A lot of media hacks will just swallow these figures, ignoring the fact that the Association of Superannuation Funds of Australia say the total tax concessions, which are said to be $32 billion, would only be $16 billion in a better tax world for super. Treasury assumes that if the 15% contributions tax was bumped up to 45% for the rich, a better tax world, then it assumes they would pay it instead of, say, using negative gearing for property or shares to lower their tax bill. That's really dumb logic. A former assistant tax commissioner has called the 15% contribution tax a super tax rort on the assumption that the people who should be paying 45% tax, those earning 180,000 plus, are doing something wrong by accessing a 15% tax rate through putting the money into super. By the way, 9% of the richest super contributions 
are compulsory. That means they are being compelled to allegedly rip off their fellow poor compatriots. I despise super being used to besmirch some Aussies to help Labor's pathetic political ratings. It's no wonder Simon Crean is talking about voting against changes to super. By the way, if you want to get the rest of my vitriolic attack on, on Labor and their super attack, have a look at switzer.com.au. The article goes on for a lot longer.